Card collecting. So I've been doing the, the card collecting thing a lot over the last couple of years where I will look at a set and go, hey, that's kind of fun, or partial sets. One thing that you're going to find, if you're looking on eBay, so you're looking, you're going, you know what, I want to collect hockey cards, but I don't want to pay a mint for all the old cards. Don't. Uh, the, the price that they're going to charge, even if you want to buy a pack of old, old, old hockey cards, is a mint because you don't find them anymore. So as a result of that, I don't buy those. I don't buy the old boxes, the old cards, because it's just, for me, the, the amount of money that you'd make on it, it, it only is if you're reselling. Videos I make on hockey card collecting don't do particularly well. So again, it's a matter of uh, what do I want to do with this? So while I'm going to do videos where I'm opening up boxes of older cards, and I'm, I'm going to use that as just sort of a, a reminiscing thing. This is from 77, 78. Now, I'm alive at this point. I'm not watching hockey. So this is where I'm like five years old. I'm, I'm not watching hockey games. I could not have cared less about hockey games at five years of age. And I apologize for that because I understand there are people who do. So this is a set from, uh, these are 78, 79. I believe these are, yeah, these are Opeachy. Made in 78, but technically it was 78, 79. So, uh, Guy Lafleur, right here. This one right here. Okay, so this is a highlight. Um, Montreal, March 8th. Right wing, Guy Lafleur of Montreal Canadiens becomes only the second player in National Hockey League history to score 50 goals in four straight seasons tonight. When he scores his 49th and 50 goals in a 4-3 victory over the Capitals, uh, both of Lafleur's goals came against Washington goalie Jim Bedard. Uh, Phil Esposito, formerly with the Boston Bruins, also scored 50 goals in four consecutive seasons. And it also says, Guy Lafleur scores versus every team in the league. So he had at least one goal against every team that they played against. Uh, what's another one here? Mike Bossy, right here. This one's actually upside down, so I'm going to turn it this way. Right wing Mike Bossy of the New York Islanders set a National Hockey League record for goal scoring by a rookie today when he scored his 53rd goal in the Islanders' final regular season game. Bossy had previously shattered the old record of 44 goals held by uh, Richard Martin of Buffalo. Bossy's final goal of the season came at 38 second mark of the second period in a 7-2 Islanders victory over the Rangers. He finishes the season with 91 total points on the NHL's final scoring list. So again, these are sort of interesting, fun little numbers here. Here's another one. This is Gary Unger playing in his 803rd game. Uh, Denver, April 8th. So this is against the Rockies. 30-year-old Gary Unger uh, extended his consecutive game-playing streak in the National Hockey League to a record of 803 games as the St. Louis Blues cold closed out their 1977-78 season by losing to the Colorado Rockies 5-2. For Unger, who was held scoreless in the game, it was the 10th straight season in which he appeared in every one of his team's games. So yeah, interesting little note there. And of course, Unger wearing older Blues jersey. Not, I don't think that's exactly the same as their classic, but it's 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 not the 80s one either where the shoulders were different. And then this, this is beautiful here. There's Gary Edwards. If you look, that's painted. But it's painted well. It's not an embarrassing paint job. He had actually played for the Barons, so when the Barons were absorbed... They threw him in a Minnesota uh, jersey. Here you can see the Canucks that season. They had the new skate logo right here, but the the, the cards were actually of the 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 stick and rink. And of course, um, that was a, a design choice that. Well, it wasn't a great design choice that the Canucks made there. All right, so we'll go to the second page here, and I'm not gonna obviously I'm not gonna go through everybody. Uh, love the hair on Don Murdoch there. Let's just go ahead and get down to Don Murdoch. There's some fantastic hair for you. Uh, and I'll, I'll talk about Don. Don has the had the fastest start of any Ranger, uh, any player in Rangers history during the amazing rookie season of 76-77. He had the distinction of scoring two goals in his first NHL game and added five tallies in his fourth game. Don is nicknamed Doc and Murder. For Murdoch, I, yeah. I assume it's for his last name, right? Mr. Murdoch. Okay. Uh, Phil Russell. The nice thing with these two, they all have like uh, a facsimile of their, their signature on the back. I always thought that was interesting when they had the, the signature on the back. There were baseball cards, Opeachy baseball cards I had in the 80s, which had all the signatures on the front. Those were really cool. So Bernie Perrant here. You can see Bernie Perrant right there. This was one of his final seasons. Gene Carr of the Penguins. He's now with Flames. So 
in the instance where it's a full body shot, they don't try to color everything. They just they just put the now with underneath. But that's the that's the penguins jersey I want right there. That's it. See that? That's beautiful. It's a dark blue color, and it's beautiful because it just doesn't match. Uh, Greg Shepard, Kent Eric Anderson of the North Stars. Kent Eric was signed by the North Stars after an impressive showing in Swedish Division One play in seventy six seventy seven. He led his team Faria Stads in scoring with 17 goals and 17 assists for 34 points in 30 games and showed well on the defense. So, right winger, Kent Eric Anderson. Next one. Ah, oh, there we go. Dennis Auchar. So, right there, Colorado Rockies. That's fantastic. And there's Rogi Vashon right there in the middle. And I'm wearing a Rogi Vashon jersey. So, there you go. Vashon, who was with the Kings... 71, 72 through 77, 78, which is this one here, and that's a beautiful card. Uh, Ouchar, 228 games played in his career, 98 points to that stage. Uh, there's Dan Maloney, who was with the Maple Leafs at that point. Uh, Dick Redmond, shown with the Flames. So now what's interesting is he's traded from the Blues. So Dickie Redmond is traded from the Blues to the Flames. So they paint him into the Flames jersey. That's a paint job. And then he gets traded to the Bruins. So they have to put now with Bruins on top of their paint job. I loved it when that happened. That was fantastic. Uh, Guy Chiron, 411 points in 574 games for Guy Chiron. Uh, you talk about guys who, at some point in time, I may do a video on. He would definitely be one of those guys. There's uh, Anders Hedberg. I get asked a lot about uh, Jets and, and, and their their play in the, in the WHA and all this. Well, Hedberg... Uh, four years in Winnipeg, and what's interesting is, on here, they actually show his WHA totals. This was when the hockey cards would show you their WHA totals when they didn't treat him like they didn't exist, which happened later. Uh, a veteran of four seasons with WHA's Winnipeg Jets, Anders joins the Rangers for 78-79. He won the league's Rookie of the Year award in 74-75 and led with 13 goals during the playoffs in 1976. So this here is actually, if you look, it's a painted jersey. Now here's... Here's the trivia thing. This painted jersey here, this New York Rangers, well, when the Rangers went back to their, their word mark across the front, this design goes to the Winnipeg Jets. The Winnipeg Jets is where Anders Hedberg was coming from. So that's an interesting one right there. Uh, there's Mel Bridgman, who was the number one draft pick by the Flyers back in the day. Uh, let's see. Oh, one of my favorites. Oh, and another. Oh, wow, that's unfortunate. Okay, so I'm gonna have to take back the they painted over, but not if it was full. The full oh that's got oh that's got awful. I'm I'm not sure what they were thinking there. Just just leave him in his Barons jersey. Poor Joe Malosh. That's that's awful. He played for the Seals and the Barons, and now he's and now he's painted into a Minnesota jersey, and it just it looks it looks that looks that's wow that's some serious wow right there. And of course Daryl Sittler right there on the left hand side, my left, your right. Uh, Gary Howitt there for the Islanders right in the middle. Uh, Chapman, St. Laurent, Bennett, Magnuson. Keith Magnuson has a knack of making the right play at the right time for the Blackhawks. Uh, he was also a captain at one point for the Blackhawks. Blackhawk jerseys don't really change, but they sure sure look better now than what they did back then, in my eyes anyways. Uh, Pierre LaRouche, Michel Plass, who was the number one draft pick himself, uh, playing for the Colorado Rockies. So I'm going to go out on a limb and say... He didn't make the playoffs. Uh, and then he would end up playing for the Quebec Nordiques after that, I do believe. All right. Uh, Gary Sargent, now with the North Stars. So they didn't actually paint over Gary Sargent's uh, jersey there. Uh, Sargent, I, li I like the name Sargent when I was a kid. So, And there's uh, Mike Walton in the middle. That's a paint job as well. He's actually wearing a Canucks jersey. They've painted it to look like blues. Uh, he had 29 goals, 20, 37 assists, 66 points, and 65 games for the Canucks that year. And all it says on the back is, is accurate on breakaways. He didn't even get a sentence. They gave him a fragment. That's not very nice. Uh, Robert Picard, right here, Washington Capitals. Uh, Robert has both size and mobility to play tough NHL defense and the kind of puck handling ability and shot from the point that can spark an offense. He's the nephew of Noel Picard, former defender, former defenseman in the league doesn't even say where just that he was a defenseman in the league oh gary mcadam right there with buffalo farish with the rangers 
Terry O'Reilly, so one of for 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 Boston fans back in the day, right? They they loved Gary O'Reilly or Terry O'Reilly. Either or Gary, I assume, is his twin brother that nobody ever saw. Uh, Steve Jensen now with Kings. I remember Jensen with the Kings. Yves Belanger. Yeah, you want to talk about this is this is where it's fun because then you look at a goaltender and you go, hey, Yves Belanger, huh? I have no idea, no idea. So then you you know you look a guy up and then you go, hey, maybe maybe a video at some point. Uh, oh, here's another paint job. Oh man, and it's another Cleveland Baron. So all of the Barons got painted as Minnesota North Stars in this set, and then they get and then they get moved. So he's now with the Blues. They painted a North Stars that he never wore over top of the Barons to put now with Blues over top. Just fantastic. Uh, there's Darcy Rhoda in the middle from the Hawks. I'm not sure why the hair looks the way it does in these. So you'll notice a lot of guys not wearing helmets, but their hair kind of looks like a helmet. I, I have no idea. And Rhoda wasn't traded or anything, so that's the legit jersey and all that. There's Dennis Hextall. Uh, he, he could win a fight or two in his day. There's Peter Mahovlich down here for Pittsburgh. That's a good shot of that jersey as well. Jersey that I'm hunting for. Ken Dryden in the middle, of course. Did not play. So if you look at Ken Dryden's on the back, it, it has did not play for 73-74. That was the season that Montreal learned, you know what, we do need that Dryden guy in that. We didn't think we did as much as, as we turns out we do. Uh, Inge ha Hammerstrom is in the middle here. Uh, so St. Louis Blues. And again, this is at a time where there weren't that many Europeans playing in the NHL. Uh, there's Doug Favell for the Colorado Rockies. And Dennis Ververgert for the Canucks. So again... You've got him there with the Canucks, 21 goals that season. He'd had 37 a couple years before that. And uh, it says here, One of Dennis's fondest memories is the night of January 20th, 1976, when he scored two goals in the NHL All-Star Game at Philadelphia. A strong skater with great stamina. So he went to the All-Star Game. Ah, one of my first ever hockey cards. One of the first cards I ever got. I had a friend of mine that was older than me, and he gave me that Steve Vickers card. And this isn't the same one, obviously. Uh, the one I had just got just... It was beat up anyways. So when I was trading in old hockey cards in the early 90s and card shops were a thing, I traded that in. Uh, that was one of the first cards I got. Steve Vickers uh, was kind of a fast out of the gate guy. Uh, Steve holds the Rangers club record of seven points in one game. He tallied three goals and four assists in a game versus the Capitals February 18th of 1976. Been saying... If, if you're looking at hockey cards, you're going to find out stuff that, that you can use as like a trivia kind of thing. Here's Sill Apps, right in the middle there, for the Kings. Uh, Errol Thompson, Yvonne Cornwaye. So right there, if you're a Habs fan, there's Yvonne Cornwaye, who at this stage had 856 points in 973 games. He'd already won, like, all of the Stanley Cups. Right in the middle, Mike Milbury. We talk about Milbury being backwards, but... He's one of the ones wearing a helmet, so good on him for that. Uh, Don Luce, oh, that Errol Thompson. I didn't really look at the front of that. Now, he'd played for the Wings, but he's clearly in the Leafs, and they've they've painted up Thompson. That is, that is fan-flippantastic. That's great. Um, and in the bottom row, you've got Billy Smith. For my money, still, I think, one of the toughest goaltenders ever, but would Hextall beat him out? Maybe. All right, on the next sheet, we've got all the, the leaders. Another one I like is Ron Stackhouse. I had a Ron Stackhouse card from the year before. I haven't really gone through these. I put them all in pages and said, all right, well, someday I'll, I'll be doing a video on that. So here's uh, Wayne Dillon, Jim Rutherford, Stan Makita. Gary Hart. There's Lanny McDonald for the Leafs. Bertie Wolf for the Capitals. Oh, man. Capitals goaltenders back then just went through hell. There's Rick Martin. Uh, Rick continues as one of the top scorers in pro hockey. His bullet shot is always dangerous. He play, He's played in seven All-Star games. So that was after his seventh season. He was in the All-Star game every year. Um, next up is... Okay, there's Bob McMillan. The Flames. Mike Fiddler. And again... Uh, they're they're putting they're painting over the Barons jersey to put the guy in the North Stars. There's Brad Maxwell. This is his rookie card. I like Brad Maxwell. Uh, good defenseman. Uh, Brad stepped right into the NHL and did a good job. Did a job on defense for the Minnesota North Stars last season. 
Well, of course, he did a job on disp I'm serious. I, I said good job, and then I took good out because they don't have it. Did a job on defense for the Minnesota North Stars last season. Well, everybody does a job on defense. Can you imagine? Somebody says, so we picked up Luca Spiza on waivers. What would you say about Spiza? He does a job. What, what do you mean by that? Well, he's on defense. Uh-huh. And? He, he does the job on defense. Does he do a good job? He does a job. So, yeah, that's that's kind of... Anyways, uh, Don Lever with the Canucks. Someone was talking about my all-time favorite Canucks. Don Lever would have been on the list if I'd watched hockey when Don Lever was a Canuck. Because he scored a decent number of goals. Excellent skater. Don's at home at either center or left wing. Possessed with a great amount of self-motivation. Uh, Phil Mir, right here for the Blues. Uh, he had been an Atlanta Flame for a long time before that, and prior to that, um, Montreal Canadian as well. Carol Vadnais, right here. Uh, he, he had uh, 1,409 penalty minutes in 769 games. And interestingly, from the blue line, 476 points as well. So he had the toughness, he had the scoring. This is why Carol Vadnais was a, a hot commodity at the time. I'm trying to remember. Now, there was a big trade involving Vadnais. I'll do a Vadnais video at some point. Uh, Guy Lafleur's right down here. Bob Murray's right in the middle. And Paul Gardner's on the left. So, uh, love the Colorado Rockies jersey. And, of course, Guy Lafleur down in, the, down in that corner. All right. Bob Murdoch. Ron Ellis. Uh, Jocelyn Guervmo. That looks like it's painted, but it's not. Weird. Guervma, totally. That looks like a painted jersey, and it's not. Uh, Gilles Gilbert with Boston. Bob Sirwa, Andre Dupont. Tom Lysiak, Pearl of Brassar. Okay, so we're going to go through Lysiak here. Now, Lysiak eventually would get suspended, but not for that hair. So if you think it's for that hairstyle, you're wrong. Uh, and there's Pearl of Brassar. So when you get into Canucks that I was a big fan of back in the early 80s, uh, one of the key performers for Sweden at the 1977 World Championships, Parolov joined the North Stars last season, ranked as his nation's best two-way player. He's adept at all three forward positions. Nickname is Pio. Oh, that's unfortunate. Oh, that's unfortunate. Pio. That's that's too bad. He can he 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 uh, did he ever change that? I I don't remember anybody ever calling him Pio, but that very well may be the case. Okay, so we've got uh, Phil Esposito with the Rangers here. We've got Pierre Mondu right here, who I remember while well playing with Montreal. Uh, Dennis O'Brien, uh, Wayne Bianchin, Glenn Resch right here. There's Chico Resch skating with the New York Islanders. Bell Height down here. Height was a fantastic name to say. There's Chris Mannery of the Minnesota North Stars, who had been a Cleveland Baron, so of course that's a bad paint job over his too. Dennis Polinich. Uh... Anything interesting on these? There's nothing on the back of the Esposito card because he had played too long at that point for them to get any actual text in there. Uh, 6'1", 221 pounds. Acquired in a trade with Boston November 7th, uh, 1975. Now, is that November 7th? Or is that... No, that would be November... Yeah, November 7th. That's right, November 7th. Yeah, I'm right. I'm right. I'm right. I got it. And Glenn Rush before he's a member of the Rockies and then the Devils. Uh, okay, Canucks, Jerry Gillis. Yep, Jerry Gillis. I was excited when the Canucks got him back, and then he, I don't i don't know what happened after that. There's Gary Unger, who had played 813 games to that point. There's Nick Beverly. This one's in rough shape. This one's got, like, a crease in it and everything. I don't care. I, I didn't pay top price for these, but, you know, Nick Beverly. It's got this fantastic thing, right? One of the club's top defensemen. Oh, okay, all right. Uh, there's Rick Middleton in the middle. Good spot for him, right? Rick Middleton right in the middle. Perfect. Then we don't lose him. Uh, Pat Hickey right here. Uh, I like Pat Hickey as well. L.N. Daig. I'm, I'm assuming no response to, or, or no uh, no uh, relation to Alexander Daig. 53 games, 6 goals, 6 assists. An aggressive winger with great anticipation. L.N. is possessed with the ability to score goals. He tallied 80 times during his final season of amateur hockey for three River Dukes, 1973-74. That's all right. There is uh, Terry Martin. This card, this card, I swear they used this exact same picture for his 8081 card. I remember I had both, and I compared them like, this is the same picture. That's so lazy. There's Marcel Dion. That's after his third year with the Kings. He had 79 points in 70 games that year. 
Says an excellent stick handler who is a premier point man, Marcel can overpower opposing goalies with sheer heaviness in quotes of shot. Why is heaviness in quotes? Is it theoretical heaviness? Because it, it's either a heavy shot or it's not. So, I don't know. That's kind of weird. Um, Paul Harrison. Oh, wow. Um, he's actually a North Star, but they've painted over the the Toronto Maple Leafs. But it kind of looks powder blue. It's kind of got this San Diego Chargers thing going on. So, And the lines are kind of... Eh, so, I, I admire I admire that. That's, that's interesting. Uh, Barry Beck, right here. Defense for the Rockies. When Barry joined the Rockies, uh, he became one of the biggest players ever to enter the NHL. He's six foot three and uh, two hundred and fifteen pounds. Uh, an effective offensive player with a hard shot, he also moves the puck well. Barry clears players from the front of the goal, gives solid checks. Eighty nine penalty minutes that what that year. Sixty points as a rookie, twenty two goals. Not bad for a defenseman. Wayne Cashman down here, Rick McLeish, and Bob Bourne. One thing, too, that I, I always found with hockey cards was they they give me information on, on players that I otherwise don't have, um, which I think is, is, is great. That, like, okay, how do I put this? In the early 80s when I was getting into hockey, I would go through cards from the late 70s and I would learn about certain players that I otherwise wouldn't have known about. Or, you know, there might be somebody I really like with Minnesota. Maybe they played somewhere else before that. And I would find out stuff from hockey cards that otherwise I didn't know. This is before the internet. So before anybody goes, well, you can find that on the internet. Yeah, no. So where there's where there's empty spaces, that's where the cards are missing from the set. Because, uh, again, I didn't get a full set. Here's Ian Turnbull. Of course, he had some kind of a record with, uh, with Toronto Maple Leafs on the blue line. I think it was seven points in a game for a blue liner. Ian began his career in junior hockey with the Montreal Junior Canadiens, where he was a high scorer, has added defensive skills. Uh, there's Jerry Meehan in the middle. Eric Vale right here. Dale McCourt, that's after his rookie season, 72 points in 76 games, and an amazing bucket. His helmet was fantastic. Bob Daly. There's Ivan Boldarev, who I did not have in my top 15 Canucks. I didn't. And yet... Boulderev, I love the guy. Darcy Road, I love the guy. Like, if I could do a top 100 Vancouver Canucks, it would be easy. Based on the response to that video, and where's this guy, where's this guy? Fine, I'll do a top 100 favorite Canucks. We'll just get her done. Um, and then John Wensink right here. And there's uh, the 75-76 season that just says injured. Guess he didn't play. Uh, Tim Young. Oh, there's Dennis Marouk. So Marouk, uh, he had been a Baron. Becomes a North Star, and then they traded him before the season to the Capitals. So you paint North Stars on there, and then and then you trade him to the Capitals. A small but powerful skater, Dennis is a strong and excellent uh, performer who scores most of his goals from directly in front of the net, also called garbage goals. Uh, I, I added that. Uh, he holds NHL record for rookies with five shorthanded goals in 1975-76, and that was with the uh, that was with the Seals. So we went from the Seals to the Barons, to a really bad team in Washington. Dennis Marouk, it, it is amazing you didn't just say, you know, this whole hockey thing, I don't know if I'm going to do this. There's Ron Settlebauer, and again, that's the Canucks. It's so weird to see the, the skate here and the, the stick and rink down here. Barry Dean, there's Bernie Federko. This is his second year. So it's Bernie Federko's second year. He's just a youngin' back then. He would have been 22 years of age. Uh, Stefan Persson, as a rookie. Of course, he was a part of that blue line for the Islanders. Uh, all the amazingness they went through. Uh, there's Dale Talon. Dale Talon, who had been traded to the Quebec or er, Quebec to the P Pittsburgh Penguins. Of course, he famously was the number two draft pick for for the Vancouver Canucks behind some guy named Gilbert Perrault. Uh, Dale holds Blackhawk records for most points scored by a defenseman in a season. He had 62 points in 74-75. So while Dale Talon is remembered as being this this flop on the blue line, he really sort of kind of sort of wasn't. His rookie year with the Canucks, he had 56 points in 78 games. He was a pretty good defenseman, and then he ended up moving along. There was some talk about whether or not him playing early for the Canucks had hurt him. Uh, Jean Rattel. So Jean Rattel here uh, with the Boston Bruins. He's known more for his time with the Rangers because he was there forever. Uh, Ron Greshner. Ross Anderson, Paul Woods, Michelle LaRock, Bunny LaRock, that's with Montreal before he goes to Toronto. John Marks, Jim Lawrence, Dave Lewis, 
It's Dave Lewis with the Islanders. And then he would move around a bit before his career was over. Let me go through. Is this a rookie? This is a Doug Wilson rookie card. So, yeah. Uh, Blackhawks first selection in the 1977 amateur draft. Doug comes from a hockey-oriented family. His brother Murray is a six-year veteran of NHL competition with the Canadians. Doug scored 79 points in amateurs. In amateurs. Plural. All right. Uh, there's Wayne Thomas with the Rangers. Yeah, that, that is legit him in a Rangers jersey. I'm just checking because he had been with the Leafs the year before, so you just never know. And there's uh, there's Steve Shutt with the Montreal Canadiens. Mike Kazicki or Kazik, yeah, Kazicki right here for the New York Islanders. And last but not least, I will yeah, I'll cut this here and then we'll do we'll do another part some other some other time. I just figured this is kind of fun to look at. Uh, this is a good spot to end it because you got Ron Dugay. That's a rookie card. That's before he had the long hair and, and all of the models hanging off of his arm. Ron joined the Rangers last season equipped with a strong and deceivingly fast shot, which can surprise opposing goaltenders. A speedy skater. He has a choppy style of skating, whereby his feet do not come far off the ice. Are they saying he's not a great skater? <laughs> Uh, he had 20 goals that year, 40 points, 71, 71 games played in his rookie year. Uh, Rick Hampton, again, he's a Baron. He go they they paint Minnesota on him, and then he gets traded to the to the Kings. Uh, a fast skater who can play up on the forward line or on defense. Rick was club's first selection in the 1974 amateur draft and immediately earned starting spot. Uh, scored 50 points in juniors in 73-74. Uh, some of these two, they they would show you like their AHL stats. This one does actually show AHL stats on it. I think that was always useful on hockey cards. I was kind of disappointed when they dropped it when they stopped showing the the uh, the the stats from the AHL because it gave you a good idea of of how guys have progressed. Here for Pittsburgh, that's Denny Heron. You want to talk about goaltenders that are forgotten about? Denny Heron. He played sixty games that year. Had two had shutouts. Uh, first two road games in seventy two. Fine angles goaltender. So. They mentioned in 72 he had shutouts in his first two road games, and this is from after 77-78. So that's, that's, that's faint praise, isn't it? Well, six years ago, look what he did. Uh, this is Bill Barber, of course, in the middle. Pierre Plant down here. Jacques Lemaire. Jacques Lemaire right there, and it shows Quebec and Houston on his list of, of places he played. So Houston, he played 69 games in 66-67, 49 points, 19 penalty minutes. Houston, that'd be their American Hockey League, I believe. At that point, their their uh, their affiliate. And then here's uh, Jim Schoenfeld. Years, years before he was a head coach and became famous for something completely different. 22 points in 60 games. And when you talk about a nice tidy signature, uh, Jim Schoenfeld had that nice tidy signature. An outstanding defenseman, Jim occasionally gets work as a forward on the power play with his muscle being called on at at the net. And I remember that with Schoenfeld that he would sometimes. Uh, play a little bit of forward as well. Oh, and how can I forget Rick Bonus right here in the middle? Uh, Rick Bonus, of course, coach of the Dallas Stars. Uh, he did bounce around the league a bit. He's with the Wings in the picture, but he's now with the Blues. Uh, it says Rick was a member of the 1975-76 Tulsa Oilers that won the Adams Cup as CHL champions. Scored 100 points for the Montreal Juniors in 74-75. CHL being Central Hockey League. So when I say AHL affiliates, not all were in the AHL. Eventually it would be um, AHL and IHL, and then the IHL went out of business, and the AHL kind of absorbed some of the IHL stuff. And Yeah, uh, that's a story for another time. But yeah, I thought that would be uh, kind of fun to look through, and uh, I can look through the rest of this set. And then underneath, just as a preview of what else I've got going on here, uh, is this one from, this is actually the year before, and that's John Davidson. I don't think anybody's going to care that I'm doing the newer year first and the older year second because, again, it's just kind of fun. And, uh, yeah, there you go. So, happy card collecting. And if you get a chance on, on eBay and you see old hockey cards, and it's, it's a lot of 100 cards, and you can get them for a decent price. It, hockey cards are, are awesome. They, they really are a screenshot into the past. And right now, screenshots into the past are kind of cool. Thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for everything. We will get through this. Stay safe. Wash your hands. And uh, yeah, we will get through this. 
Thank you guys so much for everything. I'll talk to you again soon.